explain it to you so that you can take the language very easily under your belt. Now, before we start, I do have a handout and you can actually use it as a map marketing piece for your clients. If you want the word um, format, I can email it to you. Because look at the mortgage loan process explained in nine steps of pre-approval to closing. So when you have a buyer and they're getting financing, you can use this as a like a flyer or like a handbook and add it to your collateral that you give to your clients. So far, so good. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the next one? Okay, so I always start with a quote like me: collaboration, working practice where individuals work together for a common purpose to achieve a business benefit. So basically, when you're working working with your lender, me or anyone else you choose, there is a lot of collaboration that's going on. And it's essential that you do have a, collab a collaboration or a working rapport with your lender because guess what, guys? The language that you speak to the client should be under the same wavelength, the same tone, the same frequency, because otherwise the client is confused and the client just makes messages. So from here, you will be on that same frequency, like I said, with your lender. All right, so far, so good. Woo, how'd that happen? See, I can almost see that. What should, what should, a, why should a realtor learn? What? Oh, I'm right now. Realtor learn the process of a Never mind, I have my own hand down. <laughs> Why should a realtor learn about the process of a mortgage loan? Well, one, you'll get a working knowledge like, like I explained. And now, number two, you'll understand how the timelines fall in the loan process and what happens at any given time in the 30-day in the or 45-day escrow. That's number one. See? No, because you're on my screen. Are we done letting people in? No. Because you're on my screen and I if you're on my screen, I can't click it. See? The next thing is understand each actual steps of the loan from start to finish. You'll get a stronger sense of the process by knowing the language. And you will really get immersed in a very simple manner today on what happens behind the scenes in the loan process. And, then, and lastly, you'll be a lot more credible when you're talking to clients or the lender or anybody, because you are now adding one more knowledge skill set to your belt. So now you know you know you know real estate, you might know leases, you might know commercial. Now you're adding residential lending under your belt. So far so good. Ah, this thing is a mess. Okay. This sheet talks about the actual steps. This is the one, two, three, four, five, six summary steps of what happens in a mortgage loan. And we will go through each one of them in the next few slides. <clears throat> but this is the official steps. On the handout I gave you, this, the steps actually appear like this, except they have it in nine steps. I just uh, summarize the six for easier understanding, easier absorption. So the first thing that happens is handoff with the client commitment. So if you have been in my past training before, we, we, we always try to uh, uh, convince you to ask the three most important questions when you're working with buyers, which is, you know your FICA score? Have you been on this employment for the last couple of years? And what is your budget for down payment? This has been the three key questions because you are the first person to make a determination whether it's a client or not. Because if it's not a client today, it could be a client in the near future. Or it, can't, it could be not a client at all because they just don't have the money, the FICA score, or the employment history to qualify. But you've got to make that determination. So once that happens, here's the best practice of making the introduction to your lender. Obviously, a person works dynamically. But because of the current situation that we have, it may not be feasible to do it in person. But... The next thing I've discovered is via email or via Zoom. An email introduction always works with what other, what other agents have done is they will email the client, copy me, and say, ah, thank you for talking to me today. I'm glad we're moving forward to finding your home. Our first step is we must figure out how much you can qualify for. This is the name of my lender. And then blah, 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 blah. There's a, lot, a little bit more. And then I jump in on that email, reply, oh, I said, good afternoon. Thank you, blah, blah, blah. 
looking forward to love to meet you but any anything if you have any questions and i typically include some the forms we need to use now i can tell you that i learned something new this year from emilio over here the best commitment that i've ever gotten from the client is via zoom or at the very least a telephone conference call best commitment because I, believe it or not there's an old saying that you, if you put a name to a face the client becomes more trusting best commitment level i ever got we have zoom every time somebody puts me on a zoom call or a conference call and you can tell i'm a good doctor so i i'm able to gather and reinforce the commitment that emilio had put forth and then galvanize it a little bit more so by the, by that afternoon or by the next day i had get all their docs so if you have that ability to do that that's the best and like trust trust me not just for lending for anything that you're dealing with in this process if you have to introduce it to another vendor an inspector property inspector so forth and so on. Zoom and conference call versus in person. So if I was to stack practice, in person is the best, Zoom is next, and then lastly by email. But handing a phone number to your loan agent, yeah, the loan agent will work it, I'll work it. But you will not get the best commitment as uh, versus the other methodology that we talked about. And the reason commitment is essential, because if, once I get the loan documents that, that I need from the client, Trust me, they're with you now, and they're not going to move to another agent anytime soon, because they're not going to go through that process again. I can guarantee you, it's a pain in the butt. And on top of that, we built the trust and the report, so they're like, okay, good to go. Okay, I think I'm hammering that force enough, right? Reinforcing client went to move forward, and, it, and that's what I continue to do as I look, take them to the pre-approval process. What's that? Oh, and... If for some reason I don't get the docs within a day or so, I give them about 48 hours to get the financial documents to me. I follow up on those things. I have a, you know, my own uh, client relationship manager, which I have all your leads in there. And I follow up by email, by text, and ultimately by call. I am not a high, a high pressure salesperson. I, 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 I touch gently because sometimes everybody has a reason why they don't get it to us right away. But I give them a little, a little nudge every now and then, and they always say, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm working on it, I'll get it to you in another day. I said, thank you very much. And the, the piece behind that is, so then you, you don't have to keep following up, so I'm doing it. And then if I still don't get a response, and then I will copy you on my not, my email, if I said, hey, just want to touch base again, I'm copying you so that you know that we still don't have it, because you're waiting for the pre-approval to get them to see a home, aren't you? Okay, everybody good? Yes. <laughs> What is going on here? My life. <laughs> I should have used my own. All right. Every time I press it, it jumps two steps forward. All right. So the next, now we're going to go to the next step, which is we just went over handing off the client and getting the commitment and following up with the commitment. The next step is the actual pre approval process or getting the pre approval packet. Just to review. What's in the pre-approval packet? We are looking, you are looking to get a pre-approval letter, kind of summarizing the client and their financial and so and financial standing. You are looking to get a copy of their lead credit scores. The listing agent wants to see that they have a decent score to qualify for the loan. And you are looking for POF. Now POS, POF. <laughs> Point of sale. Oh my God. Sickos. <coughs> What's POF? Somebody tell me. Thank you. Proof of funds. And that is your standard pre approval package. Let me recap. Copy the FICO score, pre approval letter, and proof of funds. Proof of funds being a photocopy of the recent bank statement showing the balance of their money for the down payment and escrow and, and so forth. Closing costs. Okay? That's the pre approval packet. So that, and how long is it good for? Well, yeah. You can actually, technically it's 60 days, but do we pull another one every 30 days if they haven't found a home and another credit report? Heck no, it's going to ruin the score. Yeah. So we pull one, we actually, I have one that I've used now for a year. I just kind of wipe it out. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, so the, the point here is you don't want to keep pulling the credit because it will affect the score. We pull one, we make it last for as long as we need to while we're shopping for a home because today is very difficult to find a home now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay, guys. 
but that's how long she looked for. And then you are sub you're going to submit your offer with a pre approval packet. Now let's talk about contingency dates. Um, what are contingency dates, guys? What are the two critical that you're being with on the offer? Well, tell me your three, and I'll tell you. Oh, you're just three. Three, two. What's the third? Inspection. The reason I don't care about the inspection contingency is it doesn't have nothing to do with me. The loan and the appraisal I control. So I bring I bring that up to you today because if you haven't already learned this from dealing with any other lender or myself, you need to talk to your lender before committing to those contingency dates. Don't just arbitrarily commit to them. You say, "Oh yeah, we could get loan contingency in ten days." What? Are you paying cash? Hey, I, I have one right now. So that's what I said. Are you, are you paying cash? Who's funding this? A cartel? What, what, what is that there for you? <laughs> so you got to talk to your lender and get you know agreement and hopefully your lender has enough ability and flexibility to make those. Today for me, I, I'm, I can handle anywhere from 10 to 15 on the long contingency days, preferably towards more than the 15. The normal is what? 21. 21. Appraisal, I can handle 10 days, but no less than that because there's another party in there that I can't control, right? There's a pre an appraisal that I can't manage their schedule or hold them accountable. But what I'm seeing is 10 days, they're okay with. What's the normal? 17. 17. But check first with whoever your lender is prior to committing, because like I tell the my real estate agent, okay, if you committed not checking, not only am I going to be on the hot seat, so are you. Okay, good. I want to that was too much. Do I need to speak to my MLO COE dates? What's the answer? Yes. Oh, only one is going to talk to you, Liz? Yes. Yes, yes guys. Wake up. We'll party at 6 o'clock. We're here. Holy camoli. Bust out the mimosas. I need commitments here. Uh, okay, what's the next one? Are there any other items on the RPA that can affect the loan? Uh, do you know what RPA is? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Get nervous there for a minute. Well, I, I, think, I think they're easy, but you got to never know. All right, so are there, before I uh, I'll put the answers up, are there any other items that you know about that can affect the loan on your on your residential purchase agreement? I mean, I have the answers coming up, but does anybody know the answer? Interest rate, right interest rate. That could be it. Anything else? Huh? If they make a kind of purchase, less of the credit, maybe? All right, let's go to it. If they went on a shopping spree. Well, where the heck did he go? Out there. What kind of crap slide is this? Okay, maybe I didn't put other in. So there, there are other items that can affect the loan. She said one on the interest rate that you put down on there. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, um, if, oh, if you release appraisal contingency, that's what I meant to put down there. If you are going to do that, Oh, uh, yeah. If you're knowledgeable yeah. on the repercussions yeah. of that, great. If you are not, make sure you seek advice of either your broker or your loan agent. Because if you're going to release, when you release a page of contingency, what does that mean? Somebody tell me. That if you're okay without having a purchase. Right. But what does that mean to the purchase price? Once you say, I don't care, we're not going to have an appraisal contingency, if it doesn't, if it appraises 10000 less or $100,000 less, you are in for the boat. Does that have a name like gap or something? Appraisal gap. So before you decide to do that, and what are listing agents looking to do today? What are listing agents looking for for the from the buyers agents today about the appraisal? Releasing appraisal contingencies. Huh? Releasing appraisal. Yeah. Contingencies. Why are they why are they why are they asking that? Because they don't want they to know it's not that free. Uh, why are they trying to do it? Because they don't want you to go back to the original offer that you have. That's partially, you're partially. What else? Why are listing agents want you to remove appraisal contingency? There's a good chance it's not going to break. Huh? There's a really good chance it's not going to yeah, break. Exactly, because they know they jacked up the price. <laughs> so if you come in with no appraisal contingency, they say, oh, great, great. You, yeah, you, great. Your offer accepted. Yeah. Snap, open escrow. <laughs> There's six offers. He's looking for the one that has no appraisal contingency. Accepted. Yeah. All right. Then I think I made my point there. Yeah. Yes. yes. The next step. So this one, 
We'll take a little quicker loan file opening. So once your offer gets accepted and you say, Jojo, you then congratulations, we got our, our offer accepted, we're opening escrow today. Excellent. What I do now, this is just, I'm showing you what happens in the file opening. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna give you a little hint. Let's say you got your offer, Erica's offer got accepted yesterday and she told me yesterday. Do you actually think that I'm actually opening the file yesterday? No. no. God, no. There's times when I don't open it for three days. Oh, no. And there's good reasons. One is I'm probably lazy. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's my good reason. Oh, no. <laughs> but there are other reasons because what you're, what you're going to find out right now. Because depending on how old the pre approval is, if it's 30 days old or longer, I've got to update all the supporting documents. I have to update the pay stuff, the bank statements, not uh, the, uh, uh, what else? May, may or may not be the credit report. But I have to refresh all of that stuff because because if it's over thirty days old, it's still not it's not good anymore. Just keep that in mind. Thirty day old documents needs to be refreshed. Jojo, I gotta, gotta put it up in the system. We have a processing system called Encompass. Put all the applications in the system. Upload all the documents into the system. And the, the, the sometimes the problem is I do a bang of job getting all the information up front, but still there's it happens. I'm missing birth dates. I'm missing. Um, I don't know, an address, a previous address, or an employment phone number. Right? Another buyer. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm missing yeah, a buyer. A bit married. So I do all this, and from you guys, when you are offering and accepted, making a practice, you immediately send to your lender a fully executed, what is fully executed mean? Both, both parties are signed off on it. Yeah, all, all the pages of the RPA status and disclosure are fully signed, and you need to send that to your lender immediately. Because then I, we have to turn around and contact the escrow, the listing agent, or other documents we are going to need from there. So your job is to make sure that you have fully executed RPA counters and scores to get out to your lender if you're getting financing. See, I'm doing fancy encompass now. They pop out of nowhere. The next three steps is I communicate. I actually contact the clients once I've loaded the system. I can contact the client because now they need to do a couple of steps. One of them, the most important, is I need to get them to, I'm going to step down to number three, complete electronic consent authorization. Everything today on the forms that are going to get are signed, are done digit, digit, digitally. I'm sorry, I started. You started breaking your I wish. I was <laughs> so everything is done electronically, electronically, so they have to consent to that. There's a natural process they have to do. And guess what, guys? And not to say, not to say this, but the elderly people have a hard time doing the process. Yeah, I, help, I actually have to walk them through it personally. And, but it, they, they have to. In today's environment, they, that is a must now. It's no longer an option. And then I review the terms and program with the client, what the payments are going to be, what the rate, make sure that it's exactly what they wanted. Because guess what, guys? If your lender doesn't do that, what's going to happen when the client gets their disclosures? Then I go, what WTF is this? Cancel. Yeah. And then you guys are going to get reamed because what kind of a lender did you bring to me? Because look at it, it went from 3% to 5%. No surprises. It happens. No, it doesn't happen. Communicate the law. All right. So, any questions there? Because this is what happens when you open the file. Is it more? Hey, babe. Gosh. Worst thing. And then the last step that I would do with the file, if we haven't already done it in the beginning, and like I said to you guys in my other in our other class, we don't always run the desktop automatic, automated underwriting with every file because if there's money involved with it, it costs money and it's a big process in the system. But if we are if we did it, then we're gonna do it right at this level, acquired desktop automated underwriting. And for you, ladies and gentlemen. You should ask your lender after you open the file and you know the bus is going, hey, did we get a DU approval? That is your question. Because if you did not, you will have major problems. The DU, which is the desktop automated underwriting, DU approval. It's really desktop underwriting, but it's that's a full word, the full name is desktop automated underwriting. So for you, when that file is open, what, is, what do you need to ask your lender? Did you, do you, 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 you get your D approval? Because you're, if you did, you're 50% there. 
Everybody clear? Yes. What's next? Oh, we're in the next step. See, we're making haywire today. Ooh. Your beer 30 free show. God bless America. <laughs> All right, now this is where the meat of the process literally happens. And we're going to go through this one at a time. So this is the part where you should get a good understanding after this class of what really happens behind the scenes. Because you don't see this. I'm dealing with all of this crap. And, 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 and for you, for all you people over here, the only thing that you are really looking for is this thing right here on the bottom. Because that's when you're that's when you're smelling the dollars, aren't you? <laughs> Suckers. Look at it now. So now I don't even want to hear Jojo. What's the status of the loan? Because oh, you're gonna get a backhand. <laughs> <laughs> and that's free. Is that a virtual backhand? As many as they come. <laughs> now this is gonna be in person. We get conference call in the backhand, it's gonna be oh, in person. God. All right, so let's talk about it for a bit. And take notes if you must, because this is the essential piece. And this is the piece that you actually, if you can get a good understanding of this in the vernacular, and you're talking to your client about their loan, and because guess what? Who does the client call about their loan when they want status? Your agent. You guys. Mm -hmm. They don't call it. They call you first. And you're saying, well, I don't know. Let me go text Georgia. What's the status of my loan? And then you get an emoji going, wap <laughs> <laughs> Did you not attend my class? No, just kidding. So the first step is when I upload the file in the system and I, and I email my processor and I say, look, it's all up there. He or she will go through every line item of the application with every piece of document in that thing because he or she will verify that it's the right, correct date, it's fresh, it's, it's uh, clear, clean, and there are no unnecessary documents in there, right? It's, just, it's that it's he or she will verify that it's exactly what the underwriter will be looking for as far as information and documents. That's the first thing, uh, what, do we, what do you call that? Cleanup that, uh, that happens. Then he or she will, uh, let's just say processor for now, will, will, will contact escrow and title information and, and order the necessary documents for the file, such as escrow code, escrow instructions, wire instructions, preliminary title report, or any other stuff that's needed. For you, ladies and gentlemen, when you open, when you say, hey, Jojo, our offer gets accepted, yippee, I'm going to happy hour. No, make sure we get escrow and title information when you send, when you give it, when you tell me we need to open a file, offer accepted, here's the listing agent's name, here's the escrow and title information, because you know what? You're making, you're saving us 24 hours, 48 hours, if we have to chase that down. Now, up to you, I'm very comfortable getting it, and I have. But if you want to be proactive, you have a short escrow, getting that up front, because guess what, ladies and gentlemen, my processor and I are very, very uh, expedient. But once I, well, just because I had ordered my documents from escrow, doesn't mean I'm going to get it that day, isn't it? It typically averages, it, it takes them three days to get it back to me. So I've lost three days right there, haven't I? Yeah. And then guess what? I cannot order appraisal when I'm missing that information. Because why? I cannot, because I cannot send out disclosures, initial disclosures, which you'll learn in a second. Initial disclosures sent to the client, signed and acknowledged electronically, is what triggers an appraisal order. Without it, nope. So now if you have a 10 day appraisal contingency and I can't get initial disclosures out because escrow and title or escrow is way, you see, you wasted three of my days, right? Out of that 10, I'm down to seven, ain't I? And by the time I get all that stuff up and make the appraisal uh, order, I'm, I've used up another 24 hours, so I'm down to six. By the time the appraiser uh, says, oops, that's all the way down to Nicola. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna set the appointment in four days. Now I'm down to two days to get it back. The point here is I'm trying to make you understand. That's why in the beginning, we are like hammer on getting this thing because we know that you need this done because we know that you might have a deadline or you might have, you know, you need to know the value for whatever reason, especially if you're negotiating pricing still, or there's contents of your offer that if it doesn't appraise, we're only going to pay 5,000 more or whatever. It's essential, isn't it? Oh, I'm gonna here. All right, so everybody's with you so far on escrow title and initial disclosures and, and why that's important for you to appraisal. 
Everybody okay? Yes. Now, here's the piece. We talked about this in the, in the previous training program. If you are dealing with a condo, we are going to send out what we call a condo questionnaire or condo certification. There are three questions in there that are essential. And if they answered it in, in a different format, for example, are there any pending litigations in the HOA? And if they answered yes, I slam on the brakes. And now we got to go find out exactly what that is because it may not be lendable. So the point here is we send this out. This is a very important step. The point here for you guys is when you are going to make an offer on a condo, ask how is the financial and overall health of the HOA? Do you have enough money on reserves? And are there any pending litigation? Those two questions alone will save you a lot of headaches, right? I have a deal right now with a client, uh, one of our agents, not here, but a client from here. We, we, we went to send out the condo sir, and it came back. There's a, there's a loan, wait, there is a loan assessment to the homeowner. In other words, it was a $400 HOA fee, but they added $100 a month because there's a loan that something happened that they had to borrow money so the, that the, to pay off that loan, they're assessing each owner $100 a month. Well, lo and behold, we didn't know anything about that. I go, now, nah, so now we gotta go, we need to find the loan terms. What is that all about? And how does that affect the ability of the owner to hold title in our position as a lender? Oh, I'm just squeaking your voice there. Um, but I'm just making a point how important that is. Okay, appraisal ordered and completed for file. So 10 days later, we get the appraisal back. And just because we got it back, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't mean it's final. It has to be reviewed and signed off by the underwriter. If the value is there, great. If not, then we have more legwork to do. But it still needs to be approved by the underwriter. So just keep that in mind in the back of your head. Or if the client says, did it appraise? Well, yes, it did, Mr. Klein. But just keep in mind, it still needs to be approved by the underwriter. Because there could be things in there that's not copacetic. And it's, you know, if you see the appraisal, it's about 20 pages thick. Now, at this point, and actually, let me be clear. From, from this step, all the way to the appraisal, past the appraisal, I can lock in an interest rate. Do I do that? It all depends on how many days your escrow is. And I'm gonna teach you something today. The average lock days without costing any more additional money to the borrower is 25 days. Like locking into a certain rate. Locking in that rate and protecting it from any increases. 25 days. So if you have a 30-day escrow, does it make sense for me to lock it on day one? No. no, right? So I wait right around here or right around when the appraisal comes back because that's right, right about 10 days past. I'm good to go because I don't like to lock it in on the exact close of escrow date. I like to extend three or four days out and if there's any delays. So just keep that in mind. So I lock in the interest rate that we quoted the borrower to protect it. And they're going to get additional disclosures for that. Oh, by the way, a borrower typically gets roughly about three sets of disclosures through the whole process. So they've got to do this um, uh, e-consent step three times in the loan process, at least on average. Not that you need to remember that. I'm just informing you. Now that I've got a locked in interest rate, now the file, hopefully everything is there because my processor has done a good job getting all the necessary documents from escrow title. I did a good job submitting all the necessary documents that it's needed. Now it goes to the mighty underwriter. Now the real stuff starts. Did I say that a lot? So now it goes to the underwriter for review. They typically take 24 to 48 hours, unless there's a high level of borrowing or buying going on like last year. It was extremely busy. Underwriting was taken anywhere from five to 10 days just to review a file. Today, not so much. Two to three days is the norm. Now here's where you need to understand. Here's the bullet point highlight. When, it's, when the underwriter is done, what happens? Eileen, they want to get in. It's like perfect people. Okay, now you messed up my screen and I knew it. Oh my gosh. Karen, see? Karen over here. 
one again. Um, this is the next. This is what you guys are looking to hear from me. We have conditional approval from the underwriter. It's basically saying the underwriter likes the loan, approves the loan, but needs a few more pieces of information. Usually, just additional documents or some other questions. It's typically not that bad if we had done our job perfectly or 99% good up here. There should be one or two or three items only for additional that the underwriter wants to know or get from the client. What is that? What is that? Huh? What is that typically? Like? Uh, maybe we need to refresh the. Maybe she needs to verify some more the fund sources. Okay. Maybe the pay stub dates was questionable that she needs an additional pay stub. Um, things like that. It's usually just because the underwriter is trying to cross the T's and dot the I's. And that's what the other ride really does. Because if he or she fails in this way, that, that loan is going to be in jeopardy once we find it. And now we are on the hook for that loan under a buyback issue, which we'll talk about differently. Let me see if there's a question. Oh, what is that? What was that? No surprises. I have no idea. She's just making a comment to whatever you said. Okay. So everybody clear on the conditional approval, right? I actually, once I get it, I will shoot out an email. Me, my personal practice is I will shoot out an email to the, all the clients, copy you, copy the listing agent, copy whoever is part of that transaction. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Congratulations. I have conditional approval. The items needed by the underwriter is nominal, which I will take care of today. And I will shortly follow up with you when we get clear to close. And that's what I said. And then right there, you can breathe a little sigh of relief because we know we've locked in the rate, haven't we? So we're protected there. We know that we are that the, we are, we had DU and we had conditional approval, so we're about seventy five percent there, aren't we? Maybe eighty. Are we good? Yes. So once that happens, and once I get all those minutia of smaller conditions that the underwriter wants, and I submit it, he or she will need to approve it or review it and sign off on it. Then what will happen is that. Um, underwriter will issue a clear to close and i will tell that to you guys i will only say to you i won't, I won't confuse the bar just pick out email the agent we have clear to close because the, the client all they care is when's my loan docs coming mm -hmm. right and the loan docs is the, uh, the clear to close is the precursor to getting loan documents when you get when you hit the word ctc or clear to close you're about 90 percent there Right? And you can start eyeing out that acrylic silver Porsche 2020 <laughs> coupe with a sunroof and the uh, you know, pedal shifters, turbo, hopefully. 3.8 liter V6 in line turbo. <laughs> Anyways, everybody good with that? That's the loan processing. Yeah, any questions? Because this is the meat of, of our subject today, guys. This is the most important bit. You need to. So, okay, yes. Uh, when you lock in the interest rate, is that, is that a conversation you just have with the client, or is that something that? No, because here's why. I disclosed it initially. The client signed the disclosure. Therefore, he agreed that he's getting three percent, whatever that is. So I lock it in at three percent. Good to go. Now it will, can go south if the rate moved on us and it's no longer three percent. It's three and a quarter. Then yes. I will get on the phone and say, Mr. and Mrs. Client, the market has shifted on us. Here's why. If you notice the equity market has been going ballistic in the last few weeks. Our rate has shifted to us. Here's the new rate that we are facing. And then we go through like, you know, they're gonna have a trap and, and an S space, but then we go through whatever options we can do to try to, you know, rein it back in for them. Yeah. I give them a few other options, but yeah. Are we are we privy to that information at that point? At the what? Shift, the shifts, at the rate shifts, or as far as an agent? No, that's just a conversation. That's, that's a conversation agent. I have with the client. I mean, you'll I will probably tell you. Said, look, Emilia, we got a problem. Yeah. Rates have moved. Yeah, I'm about right. to call the client. I mean, yes, I'll always so tell you. Let us know first before the client. Yeah, yeah. I always before I before I give any advert. Well, I'm saying me. Right. That's my best practice. I'm not every loan agent like that. They'll just some of them will just lock it in and hope for the best. Throw a Hail Mary to the end zone. I will call before I lock because once I lock, I can't take it back. I'm in it. So I will let you know, hey, we have some adverse environment we're facing because of this happening and the current market rates. And 
thank God today it's stable, but there's been years in my career when the rates would go like this within a day from three to three and a half. Whew. I can tell you a story and I have to get up at three o'clock in the morning because why? Wall Street opens three hours in front of us, doesn't it? So at three o'clock, I'm sitting there watching. And back then there was no there was no YouTube or there's no laptop. I'm watching television, channel two. Look up the Dow Jones Industrial. What's that? What's going on? Woo. Man, it's gonna be a long day. How are we doing on time? So far so good, everybody? Yes. Woo. I don't know. You're giving you're sending us your slides, right? What? Huh? Can you email all of us to your slides? Hell no. <laughs> That's proprietary information. <laughs> Just give me first again. Everybody good on this? Because I'm on the one. <laughs> all right. This really is the most important slide of all. Which Does that it? one? I know. That's the actual concise event. It's more than that, but that is the best con concise series of events that happens behind closed door by the, from the time we open to the time we get clear to close. And believe me, there's more, but this, this right here gives you a nice working knowledge of what's happening back there. And all the ones that are highlighted in yellow, those are the ones that you need to know if you want to be really good at this business. Be incredible, when I say good, be very credible, very knowledgeable. Right? With me? You guys are fortunate because when I was a real estate agent, started out at Century 21, I didn't get any of this crap. No, I just, <laughs> just recorded the crap. Well, whatever. <laughs> My broker says, here's your business card. Now go get some sales. Well, we can't post that. Yeah. <laughs> this is our trade. <laughs> hey, I keep it real. <laughs> post. Be I keep it real here. All right, move it on. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> okay, now we're in the loan closing side. So we're almost there, guys. It's exciting crap. We're almost going to save money. Show me the money. Here we go. So we got clear to close, right? Now I can order. What does it say up there? Closing disclosure. That's CD. Very right. CD. From the CD. That certificate of deposit. It's called closing disclosures. And once when we are at that level, you can pretty much for sure go to Porsche dealership on, on Topanga and kind of just, I want that silver one. Sure. Put my name on it. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. For some of you guys, it might be a yeah, Ford so Escort, whatever that is, right? Yeah. Oh, by the way, That's getting off the subject. So the other day I was watching the Barrett Jackson um, auto auction. The Porsche car that was originally used in that show movie, Risky Business by Tom Cruise, the original, yeah, yeah. sold for 1.9 million. Wow. All right, so processor, my processor, we are clearly closed. We're all excited. My processor is going to order closing disclosures for the, science, the client to sign. Now, here's the key piece, guys, and this is something that you may not have heard for, heard of. If they, if today's what, Wednesday? Let's, do, let's pretend today was Tuesday. No, hell, let's pretend today was Monday. To make this example easy, right? And they signed the disclosures today, Monday. I gotta wait three days by law before I can do anything else, meaning to read, to fund and close the loan. Did you count that day that you signed? I count the day of signing, good question. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is the first day I can wait. Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, Thursday is the first day I can fund the loan. I've got to wait three days. It's a legal, a, a legal requirement, a compliance requirement. So when I get a question from one of you guys, say, oh, Georgia, they signed. Can you fund tomorrow? What's going to happen? <laughs> what <Wapa! laughs> And this time, I might be yeah, having an right. extra one for good measure. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> this time you might get the two for two for one <laughs> because now you know that you've got to wait i there's no no and there's no way you can wave it well i know that that's why guess what i had not quite a few of these in my career <laughs> I do. I, I actually had one from this office. 
I'm like, so only one. Good. And she knows who that is. <laughs> then I ask, what's the background? And it's okay to do it because you're new, because you didn't, you never been to training, right? But if what you that I've trained, if you come to me with that question, uh, what's gonna happen? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's fine too. <laughs> But now you are knowledgeable, right? Three business, three business days. Weekends don't count. Saturdays do, but Sundays don't. All right, so what's going to happen Saturday Monday? Yeah, so. Right, holidays don't count. Holidays don't count. So when we order closing this, oh, so once that has passed, somewhere in between that, by the way, within those three days, we are going to be, we as me, my, my lender, my processor are going to be proactive and because everything's been signed up, there's no other issues, right? We are going to actually order loan documents and get it over to ESCO during those three days. So that means because on the three days, on the Thursday, the documents are already in ESCO, right? Instead of waiting Thursday to order loan documents, I'm, I'm today's Monday, I'm letting the three day pass, right? But sometime Tuesday or Wednesday, I am going to order loan documents and get it over to ESCO. Because why? What does escrow do with loan documents? Might be even in there. But once they get it, they actually take 24 to 48 hours to review them before they will make the appointment. So we know that you know, in the lending world. So on Tuesday, uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, I'm going to order loan documents and get it over to escrow as fast as I can. So by the time the three days has elapsed, which will be Thursday, the escrow already has documents. If they were proactive, they can sign them on that on that Thursday. Or they could have, well, no, they can't sign, they cannot sign loan documents on three days, by the way. No, just no. the date will be out of compliance. So the first the, the first date they can use is the Thursday. And therefore, prior to Thursday, I've already sent in the loan documents to give them time to review and prepare. Is this the time before you do the closing disclosures? Is that the time, the last time that you guys are gonna run their credit? We don't actually run their credit, believe it or not. And we do a, they do a soft inquiry in which all they do is that we have a way in the system to find out that we're looking for that they did not buy a Porsche during the loan process. <laughs> yeah. Or they didn't go to Nordstrom's one day sale. There's a one day sale or? No, that's Macy's. Anniversary of you. That's Macy's, you uh, have them. Yeah, no, anniversary. Anniversary of you. Macy's, I just you buy socks right now. No, no, no. <laughs> so, so they're looking at they didn't incur any additional debt or ruin their credit during this 30 days of escrow. It's a soft inquiry. They'll do it. Uh, they'll do it right before before they issue closing disclosures. Because guess what, guys? Once we issue closing disclosures, we are committed to you. So you're fine. Not you. Okay, that's about you guys. But your client, we are committed to your buyer. So that this is the most important almost last step, right? We are now 95% there. So um, the loan documents are ordered, sent to escrow, client signs with escrow. I'm not gonna discuss that piece. You already are aware of that, what happens there. But this one I will. Escrow must return the original signed documents to us. I still get requests from an escrow officer say, can I just email you a copy and fund it? No. <laughs> Now we can prepare, we can review it to make sure you didn't make any errors. Because guess what, guys? The, S, the loan documents are driven by the bank. Therefore, the escrow officer and the signers, the buyer, must comply with the bank's requirement on what's needed, on how those things needed to be signed, dated, and so forth. So when, when that goes back to us, it takes 24 to 48 hours for us to review it for accuracy and compliance. Because if we don't and we fund the loan, we are committed, aren't we? The money is already out there. So we will review. So think, think about that. So we've got three days here, another day or two for signing, right? And then another 24 hours here for us to review it. This is the point I'm trying to drive. So, that, so you don't ask that question, oh, closing disclosures, can they sign them all? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right so we get it back we take and we do a good job we do 24 hours or less to review some calendars will take 48 hours. boa will take three days because that's how much 
stuff they have to go through. They're a big company, right? They'll take three days to review that. And you can't call them or contact them. Yeah, they're very slow. And so here's a, here's a selling point because the big institution, the brick and mortar, there is no way during this process, you are out of, you're out. You can't, you don't have any contact, no updates, nothing. They won't, you're out. Even the loan agent that you dealt with in the branch doesn't know what's going on. They don't get any updates. Here, you go, hey, Georgia, what the hell? It would be signed yesterday. Aren't you funding today? And then what do I do? Let me introduce you to Mr. Dial Tone. Click. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got your new best friend on the other line. His name is Mr. Dial Tone. Just kidding. I don't do that much. <laughs> so once it's done, 24 hours later, then uh, what happens is, and this is the exact step, escrow must actually request the wire. We don't just send it arbitrarily to them. Escrow must actually officially request the wire from us. So, and so the, the irony here is, so we're ready to go. We're sitting there, but hey, want the money, want the money, want the money? Crickets from escrow, silence. Then the following day, they'll go, or, on, on a Friday at five o'clock, oh, send a wire. No, you can't now. It's Friday at five. When's the cutoff for wire, guys? Two. Not really, but officially with the when wire it is two. But when is for most escrow companies, when is the cutoff? For me, when's my cutoff? 12. 12. Because you need to give that two hour cushion to settle, right? So it's not just another thing that you need to understand. The cutoff is essential every day for most lenders is noon. And if you pass that, it's not going to wire. You're going to have to wait the next day. We can pre-wire, but all that is basically saying, we, we set a timer on the button for tomorrow. <laughs> That's so funny. So we wire, they, they request the wire, we wire the money to title. And I guess, oh, shoot, shouldn't say that. Where does the wire go? Title. Bam! <laughs> it doesn't physically go to escrow, it goes to the title company. The money go to the title company, they don't go to escrow. So when you, people think, oh, did the escrow receive the money? No, title company gets the money. And then the title will settle with the escrow accounts. They have like a joint accounts that they can move the money around once it's ready to go, which is right here. Now everything's been verified, money is there. Escrow will complete recording of the new deed of, uh, the new deed at the county recorder's office. Now in LA County, can you record and fund the same day? Who said that? You're a smart cookie. I've been doing a lot. Yeah. In, in some other county, Riverside, you can still do that. San Bernardino, you can. But in LA County, you cannot refund and record the same day. It's the following day. That's even, another important thing. Even enough. if they do rush. Even if they do rush, LA County has thought, God, seven years ago, five years, said the following day. But every other county, for the most part, it still allows it. But us in LA County, no. So what typically we'll do on a rush order, since she brought that up, is the following day after funding, your title rep or, or somebody from their company will actually run it to the, the county recorder's office. Over there in, I think, Downey, is it down? Somewhere over there. Everybody good on this? That's the closing. So once this happens, you can smell that dollar, can't you? Show me the cash, baby. I smell it. A new Versace coming my way. Oh, <laughs> That's right. Daddy's going to get a new pair of Ferragamos for starters. All right. What happens next? We are loan closing. Oh, post close. Okay. So we're on the last two slides, guys. So um, I do this as a best practice for all the clients that I close loans with. What happens after? Typically, what would happen is it's done. You guys will get the keys, right? And walk in, in, and take them or whatever, do your, your cut code gifts, whatever. But I also do another step because there's a lot more questions that happen after they close. Here's what. Here's what they ask for. They're gonna get their part, they're, they're gonna get a final closing statement to send to them by escrow, but they don't pay attention to that. And that's one of the most important documents that, that your client is gonna get. And they're going to get any leftover money because they might have over, over, over,
funded or giving too much of a deposit or some adjustment. If there's any money left, they're also going to get a check from escrow. So I remind them that that's going to happen. And also watch out for the final closing statement because that's their official record and they're going to need it for their taxes. So the IRS, the IRS, their CPA is going to say, can you, oh, you bought a house, I need a final closing statement. And then clients are going to go, what's that? So I remind them at the end, I'll tell you how in a minute. Um, oh, that's how. I send them an actual checklist of what, here's the things that are going to happen now that you close, thank you very much. But please keep an eye for these things, watch for this, do this and that. I send them a final checklist. I tell them on my checklist also that the recorded instrument, what is that? The violin? What is an instrument? Guitar. A guitar? <laughs> what, is the instru- what is the recorded instrument? Trusted. A piano? <laughs> what, sir? That's right. The recorded deed of trust showing their ownership will come to them. A copy of it will come to them in the mail from the county recorder's office within 30 days of closing. So I tell them, keep an eye for that. Because that is your proof that you own your property. Even though it's a copy, but it's a certified copy from the county, right? Ooh. So many screw-ups on this one. Because now because it's the client's fault, they don't know. The first payment letter is typically included in the escrow documents that they sign. But guess what? They don't. They just sign them. But I tell the client, please go back to the copy. You should have gotten a, a stack this thick from escrow. Go one item at a time and look for your. What? They don't. They can't hear you. Oh, I can't. No, I cannot. Uh, why? Do they want to lock in? It's a one-way action. Yeah, of course. Not. Let's see if I. Oh, she had a Tell them I'm gonna have Q and A in a minute, and I'll open it up. I mean, they can hear you. You can't hear them. I can't they hear just them. So they just make no worries. Here is good. Okay. Can I go on, Karen? I don't know, Tom. Can you? Karen over here. Karen, where? Who invited you to this training anyway? She invited herself. First, okay, guys, first payment letter is important. It's part of their escrow document. They need to know because if they default, they are not only screwed on their credit report, but their loan is screwed. First payment default is the worst thing you can do in your loan, your mortgage loan. Karen, she said, "Are you funny?" I made a question. Ah, uh, no, no questions. She takes no questions. You, if you're here, you can ask. If, if you, they can hear me. Yes. 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 Better stop talking shit. Yes. 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 First mortgage. Wait, one more time. When is your first? Oh. Month two? Okay, so that's this is a another lesson they're gonna learn today. If you fund, let's say, what's the month today? September. Yeah. If you fund in September, anytime in September, after the September 1, anytime after September 1, your first payment is not till November 1st. That's, a, that's, that's another skill set you just learned today. If you fund in, within the month, it's not the following month, but the second first of the month yeah. is your first payment. So you have plenty of time. Boom, client secures all documents on escrow entitlement. So I impress upon them on my list. Please make sure that you have all these documents. I even email them, keep them in a fireproof safe or what have you, or wherever you secure your most important documents. So these documents are really, really important. Oh, dang, all that in a bag of chips. What's up? Can you go back to the last one? Yes. Sure. This one? Yes. Thank you. Which part? With all of them. Yeah, make sure you have all the points. I think that was it. Yeah, so let me go back. Sorry. That yeah, that's the, the whole point. Oh, thank you. And so I send that in a nice uh, document check, a, a Word document checklist, all of the stuff, and then a few more things actually to tell them. And I always say, listen, 30 days from now, 45 days from now, if you have questions and you're still not sure, call me. Because number one, I don't want him to go to the first payment default, although he won't. It will be nothing will happen to me, but I don't want the client to go through that. Number two, I don't want 12 months from now them calling you saying, where's my closing statement and what is the closing statement? The most important piece of, second most important piece of ownership in that property. But I got plenty of time still. What's the All right, everybody going on this deck? Because we're going to open up the Q&A. All right, now I have a quick question and answer.
Do you guys have any questions? Can you people in the chat? Can they hear us? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. okay. My question is about time. This is like, like probably, probably one of the best contents I think that we've had in the council of the programming for the moment you signed. Then this is the other stuff that was the people that we just want to do with this. We need to take it to the nitty gritty of knowing what's happening. No, is it no questions? No questions. That's all, bro. Yeah, it's right there. No oh, look at my fancy watch. Says baby thirty. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right, thank you for being here. Very Sunday. Somebody send me a reminder if they want an email of the deck. If I can definitely send it out. I have the um. I have all their names. Yeah. Anyone else need a hand up? Anybody got a hand up? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm still, I'm I'm here. 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 I'm